Can I panic yet? Thanks to Omicron, we're seeing some of our highest COVID case count numbers, forcing Sky Harbor Airport to close a couple of security checkpoints because so many TSA workers are home with the Rona, and there's talk of closing schools again. When the government released the report this morning, we found out the number of jobs created in December were less than half what analysts expected. Inflation's still terrible. Gas prices still fairly ridiculous. So can I finally panic? Well, maybe you've known this all along, but it's a lesson I really only learned by getting sober. It's never time to panic. I say the serenity prayer because if I can remain serene, I won't feel the need to drink, and one can't be serene and panicky at the same time. So how does one stay serene with less than serene economic and public health stuff swirling around us? For me, there's a couple of ways. I remember that the glass isn't always half empty. An example is that while December's job numbers were disappointing, the U.S. economy still added the most jobs in 2021 of any year since we started keeping track. Gas prices might not bounce back soon, but it's really only been a few dollars difference a week for me. And even though COVID case counts are crazy, the Omicron variant also delivers a milder form of the disease, so TSA workers and teachers could be back to work very soon. I can't really put a positive spin on the inflation, so I just remind myself that panicking will have zero positive effects on things that are out of my control, but will have huge negative effects on me. And I don't generally listen to politicians to relieve my panic, because like me, They're flawed human beings. Oh, and I've trained to stay hopeful one other way. By being a fan of Arizona sports teams. Hey, the Cardinals still have a chance to win their division this weekend, you know.